Welcome to Everybody Hates LA. Hi. Do they really all hate LA? No, we love LA. Oh, that's the, that's yeah, the secret. That's what I was telling somebody last night because they said, what were you doing today? And I told them <laughs> and they said, why would you have a, oh, that sounds horrible. I said, well, it's somebody that's not from LA that started yes. this LA to show LA has a lot of great stuff. We have so much great stuff here. Yeah. And I think we love it so much. It's our soul city. There's so much to celebrate, but there's so much like inconsistencies and discrepancies and things that we can make fun of from traffic to influencers. Yeah. Well, to I tell everybody that there's an earthquake every day so they don't come visit. Was there an earthquake yesterday? I think there was, but yeah, I have that earthquake app. Do you have an earthquake app? No. Oh, and it will tell you how close and how far it is and how many there are. Oh, it's great. Yeah. It's it's like having your own uh, mon uh, Caltech. Doesn't that yeah. scare you? No, because I've lived here my whole life and I've lived in, I've visited other places and when you have all those earthquake things that's much easier than these tornadoes and hurricanes that's true because let's face it in la if we had hurricanes and they told us we wouldn't leave that's why they don't tell us about earthquakes we don't leave we the wait people don't leave in fires either no <laughs> no or mudslides <laughs> and look all right the snow problem this week yes. uh, up in the mountains. The snow problem. <laughs> There's the governor sending up the National Guard right now today for all these people that are stuck in the snow. And it's, you stupid fools, they told you two weeks ago we were going to have 20 feet of snow. And then they're like, oh, I don't have my medication. Or I don't believe it or whatever. I'll yeah. be fine. It's okay. Yeah, it's fine. But somebody uh, on the news last night, they opened the door and there's all this snow. It reminds me of that I Love Lucy show yeah. when they were in the avalanche in Austria. And they're stuck. <laughs> but you idiot, they told you. Dallas Rains told you. <laughs> you didn't listen to him. <laughs> what do you do in an earthquake? Well, I can't tell you that part. No. <laughs> I just know they're coming, yeah. but like, don't we ask We had me. <laughs> an earthquake that was like at five in the morning one time. Uh -huh. And I always say you get to see what your neighbors wear at five in the morning too. <laughs> you... Uh, I start wearing more clothes after the earthquake and I put my shoes close by Kay. just in case we're going to have a, you know, aftershock and you got to yeah. get out. But the last big earthquake I had, I, I lived on the third floor of an apartment building and parking was underneath and we had neighbors that had never been in an earthquake. And so I was calming them down. And um, the, I, the one neighbor said, what's going to happen? I go, we're all going to die. You know, I make it sad. <laughs> and then when we don't, they thank me. <laughs> but you know, at least if you do die, then you are going to die happy. And absolutely when you're funny and that kind of stuff, it makes you makes it feel better. But, you know, it's fine. But I don't want to be on the cover of LA, you know, newspaper with my clothes off with the rubble That's, all around yeah, me. Yeah, no, I get that. So if so, if you're on the cover of like LA Magazine or LA Times, what would your headline be? Oh, what what, what happened that day? What did I do? <laughs> <laughs> There's so much with you, right? It's you have touched everything in LA. You've touched Disney. You've touched entertainment and movies. You came up and invented corn dogs and cheesecakes and mm -hmm. cookbooks and everything like that. I still look at it that I don't realize I did all this stuff. And w uh, when somebody reads my whole biography before I'm going to talk or something, I get two reactions. Mm -hmm. One, I should be 95 years old, <laughs> would be one. And <laughs> yeah. another one is, you sure are full of yourself. I had that one time. They said, you sure are full of yourself. And I said... I kind of will look the audience and gear it towards them yeah. of what I've done. Yeah. I still don't think I'm successful. I need mm. to do more. I I have and I'm thinking, oh, my age, I'm getting up there, you know, so I kind of but I've been fortunate. And most of those things interlocked. So yeah. like you're talking about cheesecake when I worked on Golden Girls in the 80s. Mm -hmm. You know, that's a few years ago. Um so that wasn't every day. Mm -hmm. I worked on 10 different shows at the same time, but Golden Girls, everybody knows. Yeah. So they, uh, It's a Living was a show that yeah. I did. Uh, a big show called Brothers. That was one of the first cable shows, all the food on there. Uh, the Colbys, a spinoff of Dynasty. So all these, but Golden Girls, everybody remembers. Yeah. Wasn't well, it so. funny, right? Because when you do a lot of stuff, especially like in production, right? You you work, of course, your entire life. You have a thousand different projects, a thousand different brands, mm -hmm. but only 5% of it gets remembered or you're only known for 10% of what you actually do. A blip. Yeah. That's why I had to change my company name. People were like, what are you? Uh, uh, I'll be with somebody and somebody will say, oh, he's a chef. 
Oh, what restaurant do you work in? Mm. I don't. I haven't been in the back of the kitchen since 93. Yeah. And so, and then, oh, you work for Disney. What do you do there? And so it's kind of, I have to gear what, so I call myself culinary media because yeah. I'm on the uh, morning shows. I'm on the radio. I'm on blogs. And that's media. Culinary, it's food-based and historical-based. Yeah. So that's kind of how I But you're also it. an educator, right? And you want to inspire people yeah. and you want to impact people. You do stuff with nonprofits all the time as well, right? So Yeah, and I think one of my biggest impacts of educating is my nephew. Aww. He uh, he was in eighth grade. He's past college now. In fact, he's going to get married, and I told him not to. But <laughs> he didn't listen to me. But he um, was in eighth grade, and I was doing a back-to-school or, or – Career day. Yeah. And uh, he said afterwards, normally you don't really want your family to be at school, but he was so proud of that I was there. And I thought, well, nice kid, you know. And he says, um, mom wants me to take Spanish and I want to take French. What do you think? And I said, take French. He says, why are you saying that? And I said, in fact, I'm not going to tell you why. Take four years, get 4.0. Yeah. And I will. He goes, but College, I only need one year. I said, are they going to take you to France? Yeah. I'll take you for a whole week to France. So he did. He did it in three years, not four. Oh, amazing. And he got 4.0, and I took him to France. And I accidentally took him to the Moulin Rouge, and I didn't know it was. <laughs> that's my I, favorite movie, I, my I did, favorite show. That's what I thought was going to be like, the movie. <laughs> I didn't know it was topless. And he's like, you're the best uncle ever. I said, please don't <laughs> tell anybody that I took you. Now I'm telling everybody on the block. Uh, but, but so he now, he works, uh, he worked at Starbucks for a number of years. Yeah. And French people would come in yeah. and he would speak and everyone would stop. All of his co-workers were like shocked that he knew how to speak French. And I think if I did it all over again, if I was his age, if somebody would have told me, if you take French for three years or four, yeah. uh, I'll take you to France. I wouldn't have the attitude of I'll take myself yeah. because that's what has happened. But I think I would I would take every language I could. In fact, yeah. he said, can we go to London too and I'll take English? I go, you already take English. He's always <laughs> thinking. But we did do London for a few days beforehand yeah, yeah. just to get him into the European mode. Because yes. whenever I tell people to go to Europe, I say, go to an English speaking all English yeah. and then try something else i mean i i go all over the world and i only speak english and yeah. i really wish i had about five languages yeah. under me well it's so important i think to travel the world and see all of the different the way that the cultures work and their foods and their drinks and just the behavior of it i think it's just oh, so fascinating and, uh, i own a tour company yeah and i take people on food adventures of europe and france is one of them and it's only for three weeks out of the year but yeah. it's still that's part of my stuff and I do tours of LA, food tours yep. and stuff. So the the French one, I give people a book of a colleague of mine that lives there. It's something about Americans in France. What you don't do. They're so at, at French are the French people are not rude. It's yeah. us in their culture yes. not knowing it, yes. and we're the rude ones. Yeah, that's what it is. Self imposing. Yeah. Right, and you you have to it's within any French is the hardest to break the barrier down. But I, uh, you know, I just go there so often that I just look into. But I, I go to a little pastry shop in in by my house in uh, Palm Springs, and the French gal that owns it, she's very very French. Yeah. During COVID, th only three people could be in. You had to have a mask on. You had to, you know, put the stuff on your hands beforehand, and line up six. And she had dots. Yeah. Very. Rigid. And kept you to them. <laughs> oh, and, and she'd walk out and she's yelling at them. And everybody, people were like, oh, she's so rude. Go, yeah. No, she's French. She's yes. not rude. You're walking into France when you go into her place. See? Do you want a French pastry or not? I love that. And I just, I sit there. I like to watch the people be stupid because I think it's so funny. <laughs> and you can just sit back and you're like, I know what's going on. Yeah. I'm here. It's fine. Everything is good. <laughs> there, there's just little things. You, you don't take your trash out unless you're fully dressed. Yeah. And look good for the day yeah no i mean you would never wear sweats anywhere i'm from germany i know this <laughs> see but uh, uh, but the americans don't we do whatever we want yeah. in america california yeah. you know yeah, yeah yeah. it's a whole different even if i go you know because my family's in michigan so even now when i travel back to michigan yeah and i go to the grocery store my sister's always like what are you wearing are you okay <laughs> you're so hollywood you know? <laughs> <laughs> i'm like yes <laughs> i get better <sighs> 
I, I love to dress up and go nice restaurants. Yeah. And I'm, I, nice restaurant can just be salad and a drink, yeah. you know. Yeah. And I'll get dressed up and I'll wear a bow tie and, and people will. I was at a restaurant called The Cave or mm-hmm. The Cove. It's in uh, Orange County. Mm-hmm. And it's in the bottom of a building. And I haven't written about them in any of my books because I have L.A. based books. But I was there and it was about three weeks ago. I had wives were, wow, I really like your tie. And the guy would snarl at me like, you know, <laughs> I mean, they're really easy. There's one guy on YouTube, a little kid teaches you how to do bow tie. Yeah. If you can tie your shoe, you can do a bow tie. And I even had while I was leaving this Italian mafia type guy, he stands up. He's with a crowd of people at his table. He goes, I know you're somebody. I want to take a picture with you. I thought, everybody's somebody. I'm nobody. No, I know you are. You're somebody just because you had a tie on. Yeah, yeah. And then my favorite thing, this lady comes up to the desk, and they were so packed. It was close to Valentine's Day. And she looks at him, and she said, and this lady, snooty Orange County lady, yeah. she looks up and she goes, I'm ready for my table now. And the lady's like, uh... We aren't ready for you, but I'm ready. And she just stood there with that attitude. And I thought, oh, my gosh. Wow. So last night in San Diego, the gal said, it'll be a few minutes. And I looked at her because I can dead. I go, I'm ready for my table now. <laughs> and she, she got like, I got, I'm joking. It's kind of like when I get coffee. I'll go, yeah, give yeah. me my coffee now. I now haven't had I coffee. <laughs> That's a nice way of like breaking the barriers as well, I think. <laughs> yeah, and then I start laughing. I get away with it. Yeah, yeah, I love it. Yeah. So I know that you, you've you done it all, right? And we kind of talked about it. But let's take it to the beginning because, you know, okay. we touched on it a little bit. You said, you know, it kind of all made sense and it just happened. It's not like you willed anything to kind of come forward. But we're in Hollywood right now in the studio and you started just around the corner from here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. In fact, I passed it and I was like, oh, I remember those days. <sighs> Yeah, uh, two blocks away it was my first pastry job. I was working in a grocery store while I was going to culinary school, and mm-hmm. L.A. Trade Tech was downtown. Okay. And I was the only white kid in the whole thing, wow. in the whole program. It was all uh, uh, Hispanic and black. Mm-hmm. And I went to an all-Asian high school. So I had all this big, and I loved different cultures. I didn't know what what fries wet fries were yeah. until i went there and they're like well you put gravy on the fries and i was like why would you do that but you know you learned all these things so i uh was working in a grocery store making great money dental medical everything wow and i still remember i i knew i needed to get out or i'd be in the grocery store my whole life yep Finishing up culinary school, and I thought, well, I'll, I'll try out for a few jobs. And I found one. It was called the Cakewalk, and we did all the pastry and cakes for the high-end restaurants that didn't have pastry chefs. Yeah. Wedding cakes for every movie star would come in. Our walls were plastered with 8 by 10s back when people would do that. And every day somebody would come in, and then the studios kept calling, and we'd get studio work and things like that. So... I left my great paying job to get $4 an hour, which that was minimum wage in 1980, 79, around in there. And so that's what I did is I started working there. And then I had been there about two years, worked late at night with them when I had other jobs. So I always did one or two jobs at the Mm -hmm. same time. And that's kind of how that part started just down the street. Wow. Have you always had a knack for like pastries and food? Pretty much pastry, but uh, I half of my books are s- savory yeah. also. But it was pretty much pastry. I thought it's such a positive type of business. Yeah. Because you do a wedding cake and you don't really do divorce cakes once in a while, but not very often. <laughs> I think they're making a comeback yeah. now. <laughs> yeah, they really are. Every five years. And then you do um, birthday cakes. You don't yeah. do death cakes. Yeah. A- and everybody... Think of when you get on an airplane and you're stuck next to somebody for five or eight hours and they say what they do for a living and you think, do you really want to talk to them? Yeah. But pastry or food, oh, they want to talk to you. So now I say I work as a mortician. So they shut (laughs) up, you know, they ask you a few questions. But I had one flight. I remember when they were serving food on the flights and I was in uh, business class, I think, and I was going from New York to L.A. Yeah. And I was reading a Bon Appetit magazine or something like that. And 
the tray came, the whole tray, and it yeah. was a focaccia sandwich and a cookie. And so I started eating the cookie. Yeah. And this lady next to me, she goes, excuse me, can I ask you a question? And I thought, yeah, sure. She says, are you in the food industry? I said, mm, yeah, why? Could I ask you why you ate your cookie first? I said, we're in an airplane. We could die. Eat it first. <laughs> and You've heard it here first. Eat yeah. your desserts first. Yeah, and she's like, <laughs> okay, all righty. And then I went back to reading my magazine. Wow, so. isn't it so funny how people have all these rules around food? And and yes, there's mm -hmm. some nice stuff about, okay, if there's different forks and knives and spoons and, and whatever, yeah. that's nice. Yeah, when there's that type of ruling is great. Right. But could you, uh, the first time you had cereal for dinner, wasn't that a great feeling? Yes. You're like Captain Crunch, <laughs> yes. And it's 6 p.m. and, and I'm defying the odds. Yeah, my dad's favorite meal was always breakfast. So when my mom would be, uh, rarely she was not around, but if let's say she had a PTA meeting or something, he'd cook bacon and eggs and yeah. he was in high heaven because he had breakfast for dinner. Oh my God. So Food just makes you feel good. And I think when you make a cake or cupcakes or something for a celebration, mm -hmm. it just, it, you're building community, you're building that conversation. And that's memories. why. I got into food. Yeah. I thought, my dad was a CPA, and I thought, this is the most boring thing in the world. And yeah. he said to me, he said, why do you want to be a pastry chef? You could be a doctor or a lawyer. You're smart yeah. enough. I go, you're right. I'm smart enough. That's why I'm not. <laughs> I don't want to do that. But then I look at, and I, I know a lot of people that are in these high, like lawyers and stuff like yeah. that, and they don't like their jobs. They yeah. would rather do food. Yeah. Or they open up little bakeries or little uh, coffee houses. Yeah. Yeah. So. Well, because you make you, it's your hobby, right? Yeah. I have my job, and then for my hobby, I'm going to make food, and it's yeah. fine. So I'm not working; I have a hobby. Yeah, but it's I'm literally sorry. your passion, though. Yeah. Right. So after you were there, so you got a lot of jobs from production, oh. like from studios and stuff. Yeah, I I worked at Disney, mm -hmm. and I worked in production. I worked at a few little small bakeries, not big, just to learn some yeah. things. And um, I was working for Marriott Hotels for a while. Uh, a short, well, that was three years. A short time is three years, I yeah. think. But in food, six months is a, sh uh, is wow. a short time um, when you work someplace because people go in and out of food yeah. jobs. But I worked uh, for Marriott, and uh, then they had this Marriott food service division to where I worked at Biola University. Wow. But, and so I was in charge of the the breakfast and the bakery stuff and it really taught me a lot of line cooking and when i was there i was only there one season because they said we aren't going to have the campus open for summer mm -hmm. since we aren't going to be open for summer um we'll just have a few days here and there for work but we aren't going to have work for you and i thought well okay i gotta find work so yeah. who could i go to hmm, disney's not far i think i'll go to disneyland i <laughs> i'd love kind of <laughs> i'd love to be a um a ride operator, I thought. So yeah. I go into Disney with my resume, and I couldn't work until 12 noon because I had some work at the mm -hmm. university still. And I took my resume with pastry and all this stuff. And they looked at it, and they said, oh, we the pastry department closes down by noon, so we can't have you in there. Yeah, We're going to throw you into barbecuing. And there were these stupid little barbecue stands that year. And I smelled like barbecue every day I'd leave. And I did it for about... I'd say a month, uh -huh. and then they said we're going to put you in as a waiter, or no, a, a bus boy. Okay. And I thought I am not a bus boy. <laughs> I thought, are they crazy? So I called in sick that day. I thought I've got to regroup and really think of what I want to do. Do I want to stay with Disney or not? So I love that you reset. Like I, I, I thought I, I'd reset. Yeah, people rush to things. People yeah. go into different jobs and positions. And they're like, yeah, I'll do it. Whatever. I'm just happy to right. be here. But they don't take the time to reset. And well, how does this feel for me? I needed to really figure it. So I took that day off, I remember. Called in sick. The next day, I called and asked for a meeting with my supervisor. Yeah. And I walked in. Ann is her name. I walked in, and I had my resume, and I said, I went to casting. They put me in, and I've worked back of the house of high-end restaurants. I'm not a busboy. Yeah. And I want to tell you, I want to quit, but here's my resume, just so you know. And she looked at it, and she went, are you kidding? She goes, let's walk into the bakery right now. And I hadn't even seen where the bakery was because I never got in there. Wow. I walked in the bakery and she goes, do you want to be in here? And I said, but I can't get here till noon. She goes, who cares? You make your own hours to make 40 hours. So I was called a lead for, for two more months, summer season. Yeah. 
finished being a lead and I thought September's here. I'll go back to the university. Yeah. And then she, uh, she came in and she said, we want to offer you a position as a pastry chef. But that, that what was hard is because I had all these hourly people with me and we all were hourly. Now I'm going to be, be their boss. Yeah. And I was having more fun not being their boss. And doing things your way instead yeah. of having to like lead them and manage different people. Yeah. It changes things. Yeah. So for 10 years, I was a pastry chef and created a lot of foods out there that I forgot, like the corn dog. And uh, in fact, last night at my talk, there were five people from Disney and they're like, have you been out to the park lately? And I said, no, I don't go out there. I said, they think they changed their corn dog recipe. And I said, they probably did after 30 years. <laughs> You know, they probably don't use the same kind of honey. I don't know. But it's so good. How did you come up with it? Was it just an accident? N no and yes. There's a place called, uh, at the time, Big Thunder Ranch mm -hmm. that had cornbread. And I, they wanted, uh, first they, they closed down every area of the park. This is back then. I don't know what they do now. But uh, for rehab. Yeah. And the Plaza Inn restaurant was getting closed down for rehab. And they said, we need to do some type of food, quick food over this area. What should we do? We have this thing that looks like a red wagon or a kind of, uh, they call it the red wagon, but I'm trying to think what it looked like, like an old bus. Yeah. And I said, well, looking at a full meal out of that place, you can't do hamburgers, you know, and, and you have to think of timing, getting sure. people in and out. I said, well, you could probably do something quick like, oh, something that you hold on a stick. Plus they had fair days uh -huh. th that year and we didn't have corn dogs out there. And you can buy frozen corn dogs yeah. and just use them. I said, no, you need to make it fresh. So let's do corn dogs. So we tested that batter by making it runnier of the corn bread that I created. Yeah. And so that's what we did. And it worked really well. And you have to, the secret, the hot dog, you put the stick into the, the hot dog and you have to make sure the hot dog is completely dry. No moisture on it at all. Then it will dip and the batter will stick. So oh that's, that's what we did. And then they started doing it in the uh, um, Euro Disney yep. or Paris Disney. It was called Euro first until the French got mad and wouldn't go. So they had to switch to Paris yeah. Disney and then Tokyo and Hong Kong. It's all over the, all the parks. So if I got a nickel for each one that was sold, we wouldn't be here today. Yeah. We'd be on the beach somewhere. I That would be so yeah. lovely. Yeah. That's crazy, though. Like you so. literally touched that and it, it affected the entire global Didn't, Disney operation. Yeah. You're like, oh, it's fine. So they might be using a mix now. Maybe. It might be. I don't know. I haven't been out there to taste one. But normally when I go, I will see people will tag me in an instagram <laughs> account of my name and yeah. the corn dog yeah but la magazine did a whole story about me with the different yeah. strange things that i've created and like cheesecake for golden girls yeah. that was another thing that i didn't realize was gonna happen yeah and how it happened so. and then it just so when did the books come in disney let everybody go in the pastry kitchen 93 they got rid of us two weeks before christmas merry christmas goodbye you're gone and my mom says, you weren't fired, but I have a fear. You're hired or you're fired in life, right? Yes, yes. Do you see mouse ears on me? No. So I'm <laughs> fired. She's like, you weren't fired. You were let go. Same thing, mom. They don't let me in the kitchen. <laughs> Can I just quickly interject? Yeah. So I had, so in Michigan, we have what's called Leo's Coney Island. It's like our famous, mm -hmm. you know, Coney Island. We do like chicken finger pitas and chili cheese fries and all this stuff. In college, my freshman year, I was a hostess and then I became a waitress and I lasted for like two months. And that Christmas, I got an email. I just remembered this. And it was like, hey, we hired a bunch of new people. We'll let you know when you're going to work next semester. But like for right now, just like you don't have any hours. Oh, thanks. And I was like, oh, that's really nice. Like, you know, he let me know. Whatever. It's good. I told my sister, she's like, you're fired. I was like, no, I'm not. She's like, you're fired. Never heard from them again. <laughs> you're fired. <laughs> I was fired. <laughs> you probably still. I also sucked. <laughs> yeah, well. <laughs> yeah, I, I just you know you, you you get fired so what happened was is um uh the books came well like i said i do more than one thing at the same time yeah. so at disney i had sunday mondays off and i would teach in cooking schools around the la yeah. area uh places like sir la Tab had cooking schools bristol farms had cooking schools so i would teach at those places a little independent cooking schools then when Disney let me go, I was, and I still am a member of this organization called International Association of Culinary Professionals. Mm -hmm. 
Julia Child started it back in the day. And it's all these cookbook authors and teachers and cooking schools. So I'd been a member for years. Disney wouldn't pay for me to be a member. Wow. So I would take my vacation hours and go to their convention every yeah. year. I networked with people and they had cooking schools. So when Disney let me go, I thought, I think I'll try. I really want to see the, the States more. Yeah. So Delaware was the first place I went. This one little cooking school, everything but the kitchen sink it was called. And I go and I set up the classes and started doing those. And then from there, it just spiraled to a place in Pennsylvania, mm. places in New York. So I taught in about 120 schools nationwide. And then universities started hearing about me. So while I was teaching, people would say, well, you don't have a book to sell. Yeah. And this one school, Adventures in Cooking in New Jersey, that's not there anymore, she said, you know, you did cheesecakes for Golden Girls. You should do a cheesecake book. I thought, well, yeah, I could. And I love teaching cheesecake because people do not know how to make it correctly. They read all these fictional ways of putting it in the oven and keeping the door open and yeah. changing the temperature every 25 so it won't crack. Now, I did some work with a cheesecake factory years back and every one of their cheesecakes crack they put stuff on top you put strawberries on top nobody knows but i still can tell you how to minimize yes. the cracking by about you know five percent will crack still yeah so so that's how the book started one after another i thought i'd only do one yeah then another one then another one now you got so, 16 number 16 will be coming out yeah and then I love history. Yeah. You go to Europe, as you've been there a few yeah. times. Every place you go has little plaques that say who yeah. lived there or what happened. And I'll read all these. My, my nephew that I took to France, he was so impressed. He was like, wow, that happened there? It's yeah. like, yeah, you just read these little plaques. We don't have very many plaques here. And there's yeah. so much history here, and I don't know yeah. why we don't yeah. seize it more. Well, during COVID, COVID happened mid-March. Yeah. February, the first week of February, I was working on Made in California, and Seize Candy is in there, and it yep. shouldn't be. That's the only one that shouldn't be, because it doesn't make sense. It's not a fast food yep. place. But I, I, I told my publisher I wanted to do Seize Candy, and she says it's your book. You do who you want. Yeah. So I put Seize Candy in. Well, it was all ready to go. Their publicist that I worked with didn't know answers to a few things. So they were opening a brand new Seas Candy by my house, not far. The CEO was there. So yeah. I go. Good. Everybody should go to a Seas Candy grand opening. They give away so much candy, you're sick of it. <laughs> and it's shocking. And then they have the motorcycle that they used to deliver a replica. Yeah. So they have that you can sit on and take pictures. It's really kind of neat. So I went and I introduced myself to the CEO. And he said, did you get all your answers? And I said, no, I've got like four questions that they couldn't answer. Yeah. And clarifications. So he gave me his card and he says, give me a call. And I said, and another thing, on the side of this building, the new building, was one of those wrap type things. Yeah. It was a picture of the original building that's on Western. I said, that building is still there. And the building is a coffee house. And it also does, it has um, historical, it's been saved. Yeah. But there's no plaque. Yeah. And he said, why is there no plaque? And I said, he goes, that building's still there. He didn't even know it. Wow. So when COVID hit, the week before, I saw him and we had breakfast up in San Francisco. And he said, you know, th I gave him all the information on how to get the plaque on the building. Yeah. Because I've worked with the planning department and, and the conservancy and stuff. So he he said, yeah, I'll, I'll, yeah this sounds great because our birthday is in two years. At that yeah. point, they were 98 years old. Well, I told him, I said, you know what, let me take on the project. So I got the plaque. You can go down Western. It has the big plaque that says when the, the place started in yeah. 1921. And uh, so I got a plaque on something. You know? That's so cool. Oh, and he sent me so much candy. I get candy every year. And people are like, <laughs> so I post about it because I think it's funny. Yeah. And I do a lot of work at the coffee place down the street from the Starbucks that I'm at. Yeah. And the star, uh, I mean down by the Seas Candy place yeah. and the Seas Candy gal will come through and she'll go, hey, George, how are you? And this one guy looked at me and goes, the Seas Candy lady knows your first name. <laughs> I'd be kind of worried. So I put her, a picture of her in the book. 
standing there with all the sick. Yeah, yeah, she she's very sweet, and she, uh, I was, uh, sees candy. I just love them, and yeah. I, uh, their candy's great. I don't care how the price goes up. <laughs> it never was a, a price it should have been. It should yes. have always been higher. Yes. And uh, one day I walked in, and they the three S's is part of their system. Okay. Service, samples, and smiles. Uh -huh. And I went to the Brea, California one, and I walked in. I was getting something, and the girl goes, you want a sample? I said, excuse me. <laughs> Here are she goes, do you S's. want a sample? I go, the three S's, we're missing one. Service, <laughs> samples, and smile. I love it. And she looks at me. She goes, how about two samples? <laughs> And then you'll get three S's. Like, okay, I'll take it. So I thought it was pretty funny, but she just was kind of gruff. Uh, sometimes you're having a bad day. But no, I used to work at Cedar Point, the amusement oh, park in Ohio. yes, yeah. And what we were taught on my first day with customer service, it's give them the pickle. If somebody asks for a pickle, just give them the pickle. Yeah. And so whenever I do something, even now, you know, working in marketing or publicity and stuff, I'm always like, just give them the pickle. It's fine. Yeah, just, just give make it somebody's to day. Yeah, absolutely. So I, I thought, so Z's candy, it... Uh, um, I, I think, well, the, the CEO, he did some research. He went to the original building yeah. when I was working on this. And it's, like I said, it was a Korean coffee house. It's empty now. And he went in and he looked and he says, um, he orders a coffee and he goes, uh, I hear this was a, a candy place. And she goes, I don't know. So another lady younger still comes over and he goes, I hear sees candy. This was their factory area. And she goes, Oh, that's the candy with the old lady on the box, huh? So they changed their whole marketing. If you notice the past couple of years, they've had roller skaters. They've had uh -huh. young people. They've got T-shirts with Scotch Mallow on it now. Yeah. You know, they, they've they've changed their marketing because of uh, Just this a building. Comment. And, and yeah. That's so, hilarious. Yeah. So thinking about food and especially fast food right here in L.A., what food place in your opinion, represents the L.A. culture the most? Some Well, it could be in and out or as fast food. Mm -hmm. um, McDonald's never started. Well, McDonald's started. It's fascinating, their whole start. The two McDonald brothers that started the company, they technically they came from back east to work in the movie industry behind the scenes. Yeah. They weren't actors. They didn't really like that, so then they bought a theater in Glendora, California. It went under, yeah. but all the girls working there had usherette uniforms, so they thought, well, okay, we'll go into the food business, so all the usherette uniforms became car hop uniforms. Oh, my God. So then I quote it in my book. Uh, I think it was a Life magazine story in the 40s, late 40s. They had these rules for the only girls were uh, charrettes, or I mean, um, uh, car hops, yeah. and they couldn't do certain things. Like they couldn't put the change. Only men drove the cars. Yeah. So the guys would come in and the gal would be the server and she'd have to put the change on the tray. She wasn't allowed to touch his hand, but she could turn around and wink at him and say, my name's Martha. Come back and see me and wink. And, you know, their skirts were short to where you could see their underwear. Mm -hmm. So it was like this half hooker, half this whole play thing. Yeah. And if they didn't do it right, and they didn't get paid. Wow. They only got their tips. That was their pay. So the girls were socializing with the boys too much. They were trying to get men. Yeah. And so the McGault brothers switched their whole thing and thought, these guys are going to get out of their car now. Plus, the car wouldn't move. It would yeah. sit there for hours, and yeah. they wouldn't have anybody else come in. Yeah. So that's kind of how McDonald's. But I think um, if you look at California with food and the rest of the country, they look at in and out more than they look at McDonald's because everybody has a McDonald's yeah. and not everybody has in and out When you yeah. go to L.A. airport in and out or the Las Vegas area in and out or they opened up in Arizona, and I don't know if you saw the news recently, they just created a headquarters in Tennessee. Oh, I didn't know that. So they're going to be opening up all over the West East Coast, which... I was talking to people in Tennessee area, and they're very, very excited. In uh, Franklin, Tennessee, is their wow. corporate headquarters. I'm kind of sad so. about it. I don't know why. I mean, you, you wanted to share. be just us. Yeah, it's yeah. like a West Coast thing. Like yeah. when you get off the plane, you know, the first thing my sister said, "Let's go to In and Out," and you take yeah. them, and you go to the secret menu, and you yeah. order something. You know, it's the, the excitement of it. Yeah. So, I would say, 
I would say in and out would be your ultimate California and, yeah. and their t-shirts are so California yes. yeah. with the surfboards and things like that. Yeah. Do you yeah. think it's better to have a menu that's more simplistic and, and you know, cause they have kind of, they have the set menu, they have the secret menu and that's it versus expanding and having tons and tons of food. Yeah. Cause you let's, let's look at McDonald's or Carl's Jr. You yeah. go to them and you don't know what they have. Yeah. You know, McDonald's has a Big Mac and a quarter pounder. Do they have a chicken sandwich or do they have the McRib that tastes horrible? Yeah. You know, you they have so many things. McDonald's probably has about 50 menu items. Yeah. And none of them are great. Yeah. They're they're edible. It's quick and easy. Yeah. In and out has five menu items and they're all phenomenal. Yeah. What about the fries though? Fries get well done. Well done? Mm-hmm. Okay. Or medium well. Yeah. They fries are the only thing I'm not a fan of. But then McDonald's fries are good only when they're good. Yes. If, if they've sat for too long or they salt them too much or not enough salt, they, they aren't that great. Yeah. So you have to – everyone says when you go to McDonald's, say no salt and then ask for a salt pack. So then they have to make them fresh for you. Oh, I like that. So, and that's a secret menu item. You know, Because if you look at um, in and out they really – the secret menu item is just those items mixed around of how they prepare yes. them. They yes. add cheese to the fries and add animal style, which is the onion, you know, yeah. and, and things yeah. like that. So that's all it is. They don't have any. The newest, uh, again, I'll go through the drive through and <laughs> you'll have the 20 cars yeah. and you'll wait. And I'm standing there and I'm waiting and I'll hassle the person, yeah. you know, just so what's the newest item on your menu? And they go, nothing. I go, <laughs> You should know this. Their newest item, and it's something stupid, hot chocolate. They added it a number a couple years ago, and it's free if it's raining for kids under 12. So you get hot chocolate. So I didn't know this. See, there you so go. So many secrets. Oh, I have secrets. <laughs> <laughs> In your research for your books, what is the most unique thing or thing that surprised you the most? Finding out dirt on families that they don't know about, mm. and it's easy for them to find out. Yeah. And I have to do a fine line. I'm not going to write about it. Yeah, but you know. But I know, and I've told or I've shown them, and they'll be very upset and not want to talk to me anymore. Wow. They can't go. And I want to know, uh, them to know that I, I that trust I'm not going to yeah. write about it. Now I might talk about it somewhere, yeah. but but like last night I didn't tell what restaurant it was, but I have one restaurant in in my newest book that I found a horrible things about the owner, yeah. and they were true. Yeah. And, but then I also found out that there's an adopted child they had, and the person that owns it now is the son. Yeah. He doesn't even know he has an adopted sister out there somewhere. It was on the front cover. Back in the day, in the 30s, 40s, 50s, the front of the newspaper would even talk about, you're Everything. going on vacation. Everything. Yeah. And your address. Mm -hmm. And when, let's say you and I worked at a restaurant and we got held up, our addresses would be put in the, the newspaper. Yeah. You know, that, and the exact address. Yeah. Um, one guy committed suicide and um, it was in the 30s. That house is still standing. I, wow. I looked it up, and he committed suicide in thirty six. He was a restaurant owner, and the house was built in twenty one. And I looked at uh, on Zillow and, yeah. and everything, and it was still there. So that garage he committed suicide in. Yeah. So that's the shopping part that's of hard. the humanity that yeah. I have, but I don't want. I don't tell it. Yeah. Yeah. You know. And I think like in everything that you do, whether it's your classes or like even your food critiques, right? When you're going and you're at different competitions or your books, it's, it is all very, I think, celebratory. And it is all kind of historic in the sense of there's this really great architecture and these really great foods. And this is how it makes up the culture, not here's all the terrible things, right? Which, of course, they're yeah. going to be a part of it. They're part of our history. And I think we should own them. And hopefully people can heal from them. But but I think that's kind of what makes you special because you come into a room and you're kind of the sunshine. You know, it's like, you're, just, you're like, hey, I'm here now. And, and then I tell them. And then you tell them. <laughs> well, I had one um, location, uh, three brothers owned the restaurants yeah. and um, one's passed away. And I found in the 80s that one brother was put in jail for tax evasion and all wow. these things. 
And so I asked one of the living brothers, I said, I don't know the answer. I'm not writing about it, but curious. Yeah. I'm sure he got out of jail, but, you know. And the guy just looked at me and goes, we have lawyers. And I went, okay, I guess that's my answer. Oh my yeah. God. So I might need your lawyer. You may one day. I mean, it was just a deadpan. He was very, but it was in the newspaper, and I just yeah. kind of had the question on yeah. what happened. Yeah. But uh, I found uh, there's this one the uh, steak place, uh, George Petrelli Steak yeah. in uh, Culver City. Yeah. And two guys one night, Christmas time, robbed them in the 50s. Um, they sat at the bar, and the one guy pulled a gun on the bartender and said, give me all your money. Your steaks are too expensive. They'd eaten earlier in the day. Well, his friend or the guy helping him rob the place looked at him. It was a Saturday night's yeah. live skit. He looked and he said, but the steaks were good and we had wine. And he's like, shut up, give me the money. So then the owners had never read about any of this because it was on the wire only back east. It didn't hit any L.A. newspapers that I found. Wow. So I sent her the, the news paper on it and she thought that was really fascinating because she's the granddaughter yeah. of the of what happened wow but, and then the one of the first italian restaurants that was here in los angeles the descendants are still the restaurants closed but they're still around yeah. the the descendants and i was talking to them i said did you know your great grandfather was put in jail for a couple of years see i'll ask them things like that i'm not going to write about it. Yeah. but i did write about this one because they thought it was funny i but it was prohibition and he had all this illegal alcohol a yeah. lot barrels and barrels of wine because italians like their wine yes and so it was pretty funny that they're like oh knowing him yep that we've read he probably yeah That's he hilarious. had all that wine but you look at why people were put in jail back then just for stupid Drinking. things. Yeah, yeah. You know, you just, you got to watch out who you vote for. So oh you don't. Oh my gosh. <laughs> what is a go to place in LA that everybody has to eat at? Well, everyone that doesn't live in LA that has, yeah. that comes, I always say Musso and Frank's or Formosa Cafe or Mexican, one of the Mexican restaurants, Casa Vega, something like yeah. that. You look at any Quentin Tarantino movie, and when he puts these places in there, they're L.A. Yeah. You've got to go. Yeah. And uh, I, I go to Musso and Frank's at least once a month. It's so good. And I don't get it free. People think, oh, you probably... <laughs> and I mean, I was over at um, uh, the Jewish Deli. Um, why, mm, I think of it. Go, oh, Cantor's. Because <laughs> I have five Jewish delis in the book. I was at Cantor's and I was with my sister and we're sitting there eating and I had the book because it just came out and I wanted to give the uh, uh, the Cantor's the book. Yeah. And she saw me and she goes, everything's comped. And I go, no, I don't <laughs> like that. And I know it's their way of like you're in their home and yeah. you're cooking dinner for you, but I don't write books or do anything for any kickback of any sort. Yeah. When I do my food tours... I take people to family-owned places, and there's this one, a textile store that has all of this merchandise that you'll see everywhere, but yeah. they make it there, and I was yeah. in their fourth generation. Wow. I take people there, and this one lady afterwards, she says, I know you get a kickback. I didn't buy anything. I said, I do not get a kickback at all, and that's why I bring you here. Yeah. Because I could take you to places that are, you know, have you ever Come been here. to Greece? I have, yes. No, not great. Turkey. Have you been to Turkey? Because no. I went to, uh, I've been to 119 countries and I was in 119? Turkey. 119? Yeah, 119. Yeah. And so I was in Turkey and the driver, it was pretty funny. He, we we were at a, an old place and, and we're in the cab and there's four of us and he says, uh, you want to go to the pottery store? And I said, no, no, come on, let's, uh, you got to see it. Okay. So we stop, we go in and we come out. We get back in the car. Do you want to go to the leather store? I go, no, I don't need it. No, no, no. You got to see it. You got to see it. All right. So we go and we come back out. Then he goes, do you want to go to a Turkish bath? I said, no. <laughs> and I, oh, jewelry was first. Yeah. Same type of thing. Yeah. I said, what is it? Do you get? He goes, oh, I get $20 for each person just by dropping you off, even if you buy nothing. So my cab ride should have been free, right? Oh, my God. So there were four of us. He got $80 each time Every we stopped. Every single time you stopped. Yeah. And the Turkish bath, he goes, I get even more. 
I go, I'm not, I've seen that on The Amazing Race. Yeah. And they say you get really clean, but I don't know <laughs> if I want to be beaten by those Turkish people on marble. Yeah. It might feel good, though, but I don't know. After a while, you won't feel anything. <laughs> yeah, you'll just be numb. Wow. So, so yeah. Oh, my God. Mm -hmm. You've done a lot. You've yeah. Accomplished Aren't you a tired lot. now? <laughs> I'm, in, I'm inspired. I'm like, I need to get started. I need to do anything. But I think the most important thing is you're following your passion, you're resetting, you're you're figuring out like, what, what do I care about? What are my values? What do I want to do? And then you follow where people say yes. And even when people say no, like Disney or somebody else, it's like, you know what? The door closed. That's okay. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to go this way now. For yeah. somebody that is watching or listening, that's either in trying to be a chef, trying to go into pastries. I have some friends even that work at Disney that are really trying to make their way up or somebody who's even trying to do a career change, right? Maybe they are a lawyer and want to go into cooking or something else. What advice do you have for them? Don't do it. No, no. <laughs> the best no, ever. <laughs> no, my, uh, you don't need to go to culinary school. Yeah. In fact, uh, a friend of mine, I work with the Frank Lloyd Wright Foundation of saving his buildings. Um, uh, I know he wouldn't have liked me as, uh, if I would have met him. Yeah. He died before I was born because he uh, he didn't like to build kitchens. He called yeah. them workspaces. Mm -hmm. And I docent at, that's another thing, that's part of my volunteer work. I go to Ohio every year and work, and uh, I docent at the Homan studio, and then we do a big dinner that night, and I sometimes am the chef at the dinner yeah. in a Frank Lloyd Wright house. And so a, a gal that I met years ago, phenomenal woman, her son is working at a restaurant in Chicago, and they have one here, the girl and the goat, and he's working yeah. at both. And she said, I want him to go to culinary school. And I said, he doesn't need to now. Wow. He's already at one of the top restaurants working. And when he came here, he came last week with her for the week. They said, do you want to work a couple days here? So he got in the kitchen and started working. I go, he's got the passion. That's what you need. Yeah. Uh, you could go to a, a, a knife skills class is great. But if I was hiring somebody, a lot of people won't hire people from culinary school. Wow. And for how much it costs to go to culinary school, go to a community college. Mm -hmm. Take a f some food classes so you know health, uh, safety, and things like that yeah. with food. Um, a lot of people don't realize you make soup. You don't put it right into the kitchen, into the refrigerator. You have to cool it down, and then you put it in. Yeah. So, or you'll get botulism and things like that. So I say, follow your passion. Don't listen to anybody telling you no. Mm -hmm. I went from that really good job to $4 an hour job, and yeah. I learned more in this pastry place than I ever did in culinary school. Yeah. And I, I think you can do And you're a lawyer, a doctor. Um, I always say learn business. Mm. Uh, that's where a friend of mine was a, a high-end caterer, but he didn't know how to cook. And yeah. people thought he was crazy. But he was business. business. Business or the art part. Yeah. You can hire somebody. Years ago, I worked with a lady right after Disney let me go. Oh, Miss Betty, she called herself. And she wanted me to come in on Saturdays. She lived in Bel Air in this huge mansion to teach her granddaughter baking, little cookies. And she walked in one day and she put, she said, they don't have flour on their noses. They need flour on their nose. So you do anything Miss Betty wanted you to do. So yeah. I, I would do whatever. And it was one of those in-between jobs mm -hmm. on the weekends. And um, she was going into the movie business and uh, picture business. And I said, have you done that before? She goes, no. But you hire the right people. Yeah. So if you want to have a restaurant and you don't know how to cook because people say, I have a few good recipes. Yeah, right. I always say, wherever you work, you always have somebody you don't like. Yeah. There's always somebody. In yeah. the mailroom, we had a girl named Gina. There's always a Gina. <laughs> so I have a Gina in my life, too. <laughs> see? So what you do is if you really think you make the best cupcakes or cookies or whatever, yeah. bring them in. And if Gina eats them, it's you're good because she hates you. And you don't, you know she hates you. Yes. So yes. you always, you always, when people say, I have the best recipe for this, did Gina taste them? Yeah. That's my theory on on if you have the best recipe it. of some sort. Yeah. So. I'm obsessed. And you know, I'm, I'm saying this out loud because when I say things out loud, they're going to come true. I'm opening up a German bakery in Ojai. Oh, in Ojai. Not yeah. soon, yeah. but. Make sure you have lots of orange things. 
I mean, orange things. Well, they grow that, so yes. many oranges yeah. in Ohio. And you drive like now, we yeah. drive through Ohio. In fact, I I there a lady opened a cooking school only for one season up there. It was in an old schoolhouse and she didn't know what she was doing. And we had 30 people there and she told me she said I shouldn't tell all these stories, but she says um, it was a barbecue, hands-on barbecue class. I yeah. knew nothing about barbecuing until I was working on the Mike and Maddie show, and they said, we need you to do a barbecue segment. So I called. I didn't know what I was doing. I called my people at Weber that I knew through networking. I said, where are the top 10 barbecue tips? And they gave them to me. And so when you go on the morning show, I write a script. People think, oh, you're so smart. I already know what they're going to ask me. <laughs> so I said, ask me the top 10 and here they are. And then we had a cue card and I would just answer them. Oh, too much heat. They put sauce on too early and it browns, yeah. you know, it burns. So anyway, I did a barbecue class in Ojai and the gal said, I'll buy the corn. And we had 30 people. I said, okay. So I'm cooking, doing the whole thing. And I said, uh, uh, we're dishing stuff out. She only bought 20 ears of corn. And she says, did you bring any more? I go, why would I bring some? You bought the corn. Yeah. So then she started taking it from people and cutting it in half. I was like, oh, boy, she's not going to last. Yeah, she did one season. That was about it. So, again, she didn't know business. Yeah, yeah. She didn't know Just, how to count to 30. <laughs> she didn't do it. <laughs> you got to count to 30. You got to count to 30. Oh, my God. So, so yeah, do some business classes. Yeah. Um, yeah, yesterday at the morning show, they had a new photographer that was doing the bumper shots beforehand. So I was teaching her how to do it because yeah. she was standing there. She goes, I'm really scared. I go, you can do it. So I told her where to pan and go around. And she, and the other guy walked in that normally does. He goes, how do you know so much? I go, this is my 29th year in morning television. So you watch and you learn. You learn. So you same it. thing with restaurants. If you want to work in a restaurant, you, uh, go to your favorite restaurant you want to work in. Yeah. And really say, I want to wash dishes. Yeah. Do you? If you do, then the next job will be yours that's open because you've been standing in the dish room yeah. watching. And nobody washes dishes that long, a couple <laughs> weeks at the most. And if you can last that long washing dishes, you'll go to the next position yeah. because that guy's gone. Yeah. Because, like I said, food people leave after a few months. Really quick. Yeah. You're always moving. Yeah. I Absolutely. I'm so grateful. For your time, I'm so excited that you are here. I can't. I'm like pinching myself. Oh, you know, it's it's amazing. <laughs> Did I give you any information? <laughs> so much, so much. Um, wow, this was so inspiring, so amazing. I can't wait to continue following you and all of the other 20 books that you're going to be writing and publishing. No, I thought I'd only do one and then they just keep are. coming out. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you Thanks. all for listening and for watching. And we'll catch you next Thanks time. Thanks so much.